Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. What a way to start this series last night. Lance Lynn, seven innings, four hits, one earned, ten strikeouts, a season high. Matt Adams, a walk-off single in the tenth. That would score John Jay. The Cardinals have a series opening win in game one against the Pirates. Day Baseball, game two, next. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. A gorgeous afternoon for a day game. The Pittsburgh Pirates, the St. Louis Cardinals in game two of their weekend series. What a start for the Cardinals, 10 games above the 500 mark. Best record overall in the game. In front of Kansas City, Houston, New York, all four off to great starts. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. I'm Dan McLaughlin. That's Rick Horton. Jim Hayes is here as well. Great win for the Cardinals last night. Excitement at the end. But you know what? Quick turnaround for game two. Cardinals don't mind the quick turnaround because they're playing great baseball. And people would ask, why are they playing so well? Well, it's not just one answer. The pitching's been terrific, starting and relieving both. I like the defense and the offense certainly making their contribution. John Lackey getting the call today for game number two. Excitement in game one. Does it carry over to this afternoon? We're about to find out. Baseball coming up.
continue their winning ways. Ten games over 500, and they've won four straight. John Lackey takes the hill this afternoon against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Cardinals baseball coming up next. Brought to you by Budweiser. Still brewed the hard way, this Bud's for you. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices in our all-new 2015 vehicles today. Peter Borges making some new fans, signing autographs moments ago. He's in center field today. Different looking lineup and team for the Cardinals facing a lefty. Meanwhile, for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Clint Hurdle, disappointing loss in game one. Gregory Polanco will lead it off, followed by Josh Harrison and then Andrew McCutcheon. Neil Walker, the switch hitter, second baseman, batting cleanup. Starling Marte leads their club in home runs and RBIs. Pedro Alvarez, Francisco Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, the shortstop. Liriano is pitching and batting ninth. On the mound for St. Louis, right-hander John Lackey. Yeah, Dan, it's a Pirates lineup that's not hitting, but they will hit. John Lackey's job to keep him kind of down where they've been. Lackey last time out, a hard luck loser. He drew Cole Hamels, who was terrific against the Cardinals in game one of that series with the Phillies. Gregory Polanco, one of the young stars in this game. Had an 11 game hitting streak to begin his career. Expectations so high with him. Fans of the Pirates have talked about his emergence. And so far this year, 277, one home run, and seven RBIs. The Hyundai pitch arsenal for right hander John Lackey. Slider is the key pitch for Lackey 27% of the time, but that is his out pitch. The fastball also needs to keep out of the middle of the plate, throws it close to 60%. Third baseman Matt Carpenter in at third. Mark Reynolds at first in a few steps, and we're underway. First pitch, a foul ball for strike one. Rick, you look at John Lackey since he's been acquired from the Boston Red Sox, and here at home at Bush Stadium is where he's had his best success. He keeps winning here at Bush. Hope that trend continues. Really been a winner in his career. 153 wins against just 119 losses in his career. Used to playing in October, but also used to winning during the season. 25 and two thirds innings so far for John Lackey with 14 strikeouts. Here's a 1 1. I 
know you had the chance to visit with the coaching staff of the Pirates in particular, Nick Leva, Clint Hurdle, and they're talking about their offense will be there eventually. Yeah, it's going to come, and this guy's going to be a part of it. Polanco, the leadoff hitter, they like him in that one spot. They think that's where he belongs. He's got a good eye as he shows it there and doesn't chase. Has very good patience, and they think he's going to keep growing into his ability. They also believe, Nick believes, as does Clint Hurdle, that he's a center field. He can play center field. Marte can play center field. McCutcheon can play center field. Here's a 3 1. Now 3 and 2. And being in this leadoff spot also with seven steals. Good speed from Polanco, who's in right field here this afternoon. Full count delivery. Here it comes. Chopped foul. When I look at this Pirates lineup, I look at the athleticism. In my mind, these are the two teams in the Central Division. Now, the Cubs, kind of a wild card in that with the youth of that team and how it all plays out in six months. But these two teams seem to be the two top teams in the Central. Yeah, I don't think Pittsburgh's going away. I think they're going to get better. The question will be, will the Cubs maintain? 3-2. Lackey, nice play. That saves a base hit. And the first man retired. Cardinals defense has been exceptional so far this year. Dobbs tired auto centers defense with Holiday in left, Borges in center, John Jay in right. Hayward will sit against the lefty. Then Carpenter, Peralta, Wong, and Reynolds along the infield. Adams will sit as well. And Yadier Molina is behind the plate. So Mark Reynolds has played the outfield, he played third base, and today he's at first. The strike to Josh Harrison off to a slow start hitting just 202. Still like these Saturday unis don't you Danny love them. Something classic about this style that the Cardinals introduced a year ago with the birds on the bat. Everything just a little bit bigger a little more prominent. Bill DeWitt Cardinals president meticulous about the uniform and what it means is an ode to the pass, if you uh, if you will, the piping, the front of the jersey, St. Louis on the front. Normally it's Cardinals. Popped up, shallow right. There's John Jay, two down. I guess where I come down on that is, you know, you have to remember the past, you honor the past, you learn from the past, but you have to play in the present. So you have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to. Understand how the game has changed and, and and live with that, learn from it, and go forward and keep doing it. But I think honoring the past is part of this professional baseball experience to me. Swung on and missed by McCutcheon for strike one. The shift here for Andrew McCutcheon. You know, Mark Reynolds is way off the bag at first. And with the speed of McCutcheon, boy, he'll have to race back to first base. Well, Reynolds has better speed than I think we understood. I mean, we've seen him steal a couple of bases. You look at some of his years in the big leagues, he's piled up some stolen bases. So he, you're right, he's going to have to get there in a hurry, ball on the left side. It's always true that a pitcher needs to get over there in a hurry with a ball on the right side with somebody that runs well. You've got to take as direct a route as possible in covering first base. One two pitch to McCutcheon. Base hit right side. We did not see that pronounced shift with Lynn on the mound last night. Maybe a little harder thrower. So with Lackey and the breaking ball, Cardinals shift with McCutcheon. He goes the other way. There's a delivery of John Lackey. Outside pitch. Not a bad location. There's the shift. We saw the location. Now the hitter does his job of hitting that hole with Reynolds hustling to first base, as you mentioned. Neil Walker hitting 274. And there's strike one. Real key in the game last night, maybe the biggest key. Sixth inning, bases loaded, 
two, three, and four. Nobody out against Lance Lynn. Already the Cardinals trailing one to nothing. And Lynn got out of the jam, having allowed just one run. Got Harrison to pop up on a pitch probably out of the zone that Harrison couldn't lay off of. It had that riding fastball, then a strikeout of McCutcheon. And Neil Walker is at the plate now, and really just a masterful job for Lance Lynn working his way out of that inning. We talked with Mike Matheny before the game, and we asked him, two years ago, does that happen with Lynn, who can be very emotional? And he said, maybe. He said, but right now, with Wainwright out, he's taken on the role of ace, and we think he can be an ace of the staff for the Cardinals. Well, that's what aces do, and that's really his point, is you're able to get out of a bases loaded, nobody out situation in a one nothing game when runs are at a premium. Again, that's what your best guys do. You, you expect maybe to give up a run or two in that inning, and he, he did much better. Good pitch. A slider in on the hands of Neil Walker. In terms of stolen base attempts, the Pirates have attempted 17. That's eighth in the National League. What may surprise you, the Cardinals are fifth in the league in steals. In terms of attempts with 21, much more aggressive this year. McCutcheon is leaning. And an 0-2. Faked a second. Popped up. And out of play. The Cardinals showed that they're not afraid to run against Francisco Cervelli, who's the new catcher for the Pirates a year ago. Russell Martin. There was no thought about stealing against him. It's become more a part of the offense in general, but specifically against the Pirates. Not just the Cardinals running against the Pirates, but other teams. Mike was talking with us about that as well. They want to be aggressive, push the envelope a little bit more this year with offense down across the board, generate offense. Long look, the 0 2. And when you do that, you're willing to take the heat. You have to be courageous enough to take the heat when it doesn't work. And, you know, Mike referred to the fact a couple guys were thrown out stealing early in the game yesterday, but yet the double steal that he stayed with. And worked later in the game turned out to be a pivotal part of that ball game from an offensive standpoint. You know, we were talking about the uniforms. The birds on the bat is actually a little bit bigger than what it was a few years ago. But this is the first time since 1932 that St. Louis has been on the front. And Bill DeWitt was saying that. If you go back to the pictures of Bob Gibson, it was the number that dominated and not the logo. So they've gone back to trying to dominate the logo and have that be presented in a bigger fashion. I love it. I think it looks tremendous, especially in this day and age when you're marketing teams and uniforms and caps. Fans have really gravitated towards this uniform. One two pitch in the dirt and it evens it up good at bat here by Walker. He's just a solid player isn't yeah, he? Yeah pesky hitter much better from the left side than he is from the right side actually considered giving up switch hitting a year ago and stuck with it had a much better year from the right side last year his power is really from the left side. Not many teams are stealing against Yachty or Molina, or at least attempting. They've had eight attempts against Yachty, and that hits Walker, so two on with two outs. This one just gets away, kind of overcooks the breaker, and Walker just lets it hit him and then thinks, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Always seems like a good idea to impact. Then you question it. And you know, honestly, it's not really the velocity or even if it's a, it's how it hits you. Is it a little glancing blow or do you take it solid? And does it hit a bone or does it hit the meaty part of your bicep maybe or your ribs? Or I mean, it kind of depends on where it hits you. Small of the back guys oh, yeah. talk about that all the time. That's the worst for them. Two outs, two on. Starling Marte and that pitch misses low and away. They're not a big fan of the tip of the elbow either. No. 
And sometimes you, you, you see the pads that players wear just to protect the vulnerable spots to make you a little braver about letting that ball hit you. Craig Biggio comes to mind. Barry Bonds had the big gear that he wore on the right elbow as well. One ball and one strike on Marte. It really changed, Dan, the hitter's approach to their at bat. They're a lot more apt to keep their keep their face in, keep their head in, and actually even move towards the ball. I mean, there was an era where you had to kind of be a little careful about that. And then you added some of that extra equipment, and they got a little braver. One and two. So you're talking about maybe say a guy that throws hard but also has a nasty breaking ball you know the righty righty matchup lefty lefty matchup so you're hanging in there a little bit more and you hang in still thinking it's a breaking ball all of a sudden it's a fastball and it hits you but you, you almost allowed that to happen in a, in a sense and they've curtailed some of that the guards that you can wear now and, and I think it's uh, probably good from the pitcher standpoint for a while, it was just ridiculous. Well, there were players that were getting hit and getting mad at pitchers on balls that the umpire was calling a strike. Mm -hmm. That's how much they were diving. By the way, John Lackey, in terms of active pitchers and hitting batters, is third on that list. Last night's starter for the Pirates, A.J. Burnett, has hit 133. Lackey, 109. Tim Hudson sandwiched between the two, and then Bronson Arroyo. Is fourth. Molina giving a little pep talk there to John Lackey. Blowing outside. You know, sometimes first, second innings for a starter, it takes a while to get the feel of it. Sometimes too strong, not strong enough. Doesn't have a good grip on it. Right now we're seeing that from Lackey. Well, he's overcooked a couple breaking balls, and, and I think that's part of Yachty trying to settle him down. That's part of the fans trying to cheer him on. A 3 2 pitch. It's sharply to short. Nice play. Peralta across the diamond. Pirates strand two. Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first and a gorgeous afternoon and a packed crowd here at Bush. The Pirates and the Cardinals. Let's see the Cardinals lineup today. Some changes in the lineup. We've seen a change at the top. As Phil Nichols, our cameraman, goes right to John Jay. A live look at John, our Cardinals leadoff man this afternoon. Then Matt Carpenter, Matt Holliday, Johnny Peralta, the cleanup man, Mark Reynolds, Johnny or Molina, Colton Wong, Peter Borges. It's enjoyed a good homestand. And John Lackey, the pitcher, batting ninth. 
When right, when the slider is good, this guy is as tough as anybody. Francisco Lariano. When he's right, he is terrific. He's got a slider and a changeup that he throws at the same velocity. And I think that's the secret to his success. He throws the ball in the middle of the plate, 84 miles an hour, and it'll either, either dive to the left or to the right if it's a changeup or a slider. And I think it's very tough to pick up when he's down in the zone. By the way, how about that shot that Phil gets of John Jay coming to the plate and the stands and the city in the back background? I just think that's phenomenal. So grateful that we get a chance to get that shot of player coming to the plate. Seeing guys coming in off the field, pitcher warming up, the access that we're now given. One ball and two strikes. I could see a few of those pitchers if it was back in the day. Well, they may have to carry Phil Nichols off on a stretcher. <laughs> well, like I said, you adjust to the times. <laughs> you honor the past, but you live in the present. That's right. One, two is a broken bat. Slowly hit to short. Jordy Mercer slings it over to Alvarez for the out. Hyundai pitch arsenal for Francisco Lariano. Throws his fastball less than 50% of the time. You think about Lance Lynn, his number's up around 80 plus in terms of how much he uses that fastball, but a steady diet of both sliders and changeups. The changeups, of course, more to right handed batters, and the slider to the left handers to get the ball to move away. It's been a historic start, by the way, for Matt Carpenter. I'm not sure the national media has picked up enough on what he's been able to do. At least one extra base hit in 15 of the first 22 games. Now, that's the most ever by a Cardinal. This franchise began play 1892. 18 extra base hits. Tied for second was Stan the Man in 1954. They trail only Joe Medwick's 19 and 37 in the first 22 games. Incredible start here for Matt Carpenter. Somehow, knowing Matt, I don't think he really cares too much about being under the radar a bit nationally. In fact, players are typically geared that way. I mean, they would rather not get too much attention because they get the sense of, okay, I'm in a zone right now. I don't want to kind of talk about it too much. I just want to keep doing it. I don't know that they feel that way about their team exploits, however. You, you want your team to be recognized, but you don't want too much scrutiny on why is it that you're playing so well. That's a tough question to answer from a player's point of view. And you mentioned last inning that John Lackey hit his 109th career batter. By comparison, Bob Gibson hit 102. And Al Raboski, 13. Bob Gibson in one of our speaker series, I used the term headhunter. And he said, ah, 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 he didn't like that. He said, hitters hit themselves. They dive across the plate. I didn't do it. So, so Gibby hit 102, Al just 13, but both of them just missed about 500 guys. It's <laughs> a good way to put it. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. This is where Matt Carpenter is just ridiculously good. Two strikes, working account, and a 3 2 pitch. Great at bat again by Carpenter. He's something else. Kia in the driver's seat. What do we have today? Well, Matt Carpenter with two strikes. 352 average, the great OPS, 34 total bases. Best in baseball. That goes so against the numbers, Dan, collectively of what people do with two strikes. That, I mean, it seems like, okay, well, that's good. No, that's not good. That's great. Because the average player with two strikes is going to hit 220, not 350. What I find interesting is I, I work with Al, and Al's mean, tough, rough. I work with Tim McCarver, who's a catcher, so doesn't hit anybody, at least not that we know about. <laughs> and I work with Rick Horton. The director of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, nice guy, always smiling, signing autographs, taking pictures. And yet, I look here, Rick Horton hit 15, Al Raboski 13. You want to explain yourself? Well, I think the simple answer is they deserved it. It didn't hurt him, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
No, that's the that's the real answer. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't care. Talk about diving. They were a little more worried about Alan Gibby. <laughs> I think that's great. I got to give Al some trouble about that next time I see him. Makes me think of a guy at our fantasy camp. I think it was Larry Walker, one of these fantasy campers who didn't throw very hard, which again I can understand. Threw one right at Larry Walker at a fantasy camp, and, and Larry caught it and threw it back to him. <laughs> now, now nobody did that to me, <laughs> thankfully. Can you imagine that? Oh man. Oh, that's great. Check on Carpenter. I like what the Cardinals of going back to the point we made in the first that they have been Rick so aggressive and we saw it against Cervelli last night teams have tried 29 stolen base attempts against Cervelli he's only caught five this could be two slowly hit to short Mercer to Walker on the first and double play second double play in this series that holidays hit into what a mean guy Rick Hort <laughs> <laughs> He's right. You knew Hungo was going to come back oh, with course, something. Of course, of course. He wouldn't put up with that. Well, here's the deal. If you've got a great fastball, you intimidate. If you don't, you try to bore the hitter. You uh -huh. just try to lull him to sleep. So that's them. what you did. I tried to get him. Honestly, John Tudor would do that. Try to get the hitter over anxious and then throw it slower. I mean, it just worked. Worked for him very well 1985 an incredible year for John Tudor after a terrible start we'll have a John Tudor bobblehead day here at the ballpark oh, Celebrating Alvarez there's a series of players from the 1985 National League Championship team celebrating 30 years of that accomplishment and John Tudor at the ballpark it'll be fun Jack Clark will be here next week for his bobblehead night it's Tuesday, part of the Bud Bash. We'll be in the uh, Champions Club as well. Now we'll join us. We'll have a lot of fun. There's a strikeout of Pedro Alvarez in the first of the afternoon for John Lackey as we turn to Rick Horton's Toyota keys to the game. I got a couple of things on my mind. I'll start with John Lackey. I, I think he pitches well as long as he doesn't make mistakes. I think the key to his success is staying on the corners, making good pitches. How Mike Matheny and Clint Hurdle use their bullpens today will also be key after the extra innings last night and emotionally you want to see the Cardinals ride this wave. They have been winning.
They have that winning feeling. Don't change a thing. Just go get it done. We're in the top of the second. No score. One out. Francisco Cervelli hitting 271. Looks at strike one. When you go back and look, once the season is completed, why a team wins. You can look at home records. Look at what a team does inside their division. And the Cardinals so far here at Bush Stadium, they are 9 and 2. Those head to head matchups are big swing games over the course of six months, just like last night. Cardinals have been a good home team for a long time, haven't they? Ever since they opened up this ballpark. 0 2 pitch. Hold foul. Cardinals on Tuesday night speaking of that game we'll have to figure out who that starter will be with Wainwright out Cooney has been sent down you can't bring him back up for 10 days so you're looking at maybe a Villanueva maybe Tyler Lyons hit to short Peralta makes the play Tyler Lyons by the way his next scheduled start for Memphis would be on Monday a couple of options for Mike Matheny and John Mosellock will be in the Champions Club that night. Looking forward to that yearly telecast from the Champions Club. They've made some changes there for folks who haven't seen it this year. They've opened it up some, and there's, I mean, it's just a terrific place to watch the game. And we'll be doing our broadcast from there, you, Al, and I, and look forward to that. Jordy Mercer, long throw for Carpenter, and he gets it by step. One, two, three inning for John Lackey. Just eight pitches. Peralta, Reynolds, Molina coming up. Baseball, what could be better? Great sports day with the fight tonight, the Derby. Baseball right now, we check in with Jim Hayes. And uh, Jimmy, Cardinals hoping to get a little bit healthier in the next week or two. Yeah, a lot of people asking about uh, Randall Gritchick as to when he'll be back. He told me when this is straight from Gritchick that he's making slow and steady progress. Of course, he's on the DL with the lower back strain. He told me he expects to go out on a rehab assignment as early as the middle of next week, possibly the end of the week. He says he's swinging the bat, no problem, and he even has resumed limited workouts. He has not been cleared to run or to do any defensive work, but he thinks that will be soon. Dan, he told me the toughest part about being on the DL home games. He told me you're around your teammates and you're so close and you can't do anything to help the team. Yeah, and you would think that today against a lefty like Liriano, this would be one of his starts with Hayward out. Uh, Jim, we were talking before we went to break, and this is Johnny Peralta at the plate, about uh, what may happen on Tuesday night. You had the chance in the pregame to visit with Carlos Villanueva. Here's the 1-1. 
he would like to start, but his role in the bullpen may be more important for the club overall. Yeah, I asked him, I said, do you throw your hat in the ring as to that possible start on Tuesday? And he said he doesn't say anything. He's hoping that the Cardinals know what he can do. He started over 70 games in his career, but Dan, he may be so valuable in that role to do anything that they don't want to spend him on the start. Of course, they have Tyler Lyons as a possibility, and then you have being the way back to the bullpen. All right, Jimmy, thanks. Brings in Mark Reynolds with one out. I know, Rick, you love being the wave out there. Well, I also love the fact that you've got a bullpen that's doing well, and, and you'd have to think twice about monkeying with that. And, and I think being the wave could certainly make that start and do a nice job, and he was terrific his last time out. But you've got a bullpen that's functioning well, and, you know, you start to kind of make some changes just to fix other spots you know I, I don't think that's always a good idea I if it were me I I would prefer to bring up somebody like Lions of course you prefer to have Marco Gonzalez ready but he's not but if 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 it's a choice between Villanueva or Lions for me I would prefer Lions here's Mike Reynolds had a nice conversation with Carlos today he is so well spoken bilingual born in the uh, Dominican Republic he said his dad stressed education for their family, and they went to a bilingual school in the Dominican, and that's where he learned to speak the English language. And then he said when he came over to the United States, the school taught a lot of what's happening here in the U.S. in terms of history and government. Very bright guy, very active in the Players Association. Yeah, and that, act, and that activity that he has in the Players Association has led him to be one of the major player reps in all of baseball. So among his peers, he is extraordinarily respected to be able to be representing them at the bargaining table, which he's done. And he said he wants to keep playing this game more for that than for playing. Not that he doesn't like playing, but he thinks he's got an important role of leadership with his fellow player. Strikeout of Mark Reynolds. Being away by 18 and 33 as a starter, 29 and 18 as a reliever. So is it a changeup or a slider? You don't know till right about there. Breaks down and in instead of down and away, and that's the tricky part again for Liriano. Both pitches around 84 miles an hour, almost exactly the same velocity. It can be very, very tricky. Always a nice round of applause for Yadier Molina. Cardinals looking for their first base hit. Carpenter drew a walk and then was erased on an inning ending double play. 0-1 pitch. Well, that's nasty right there. Mm. He seems pretty locked in today. He does. The times we've seen him, Dan, over the last two or three years, you wonder why he goes through some of the bad stretches that he goes through. One two pitch to Molina. Ground ball right side. Alvarez knocks it down. Plenty of time. Liriano is covering. Pedro Alvarez, major league leading 25 airs last year. Already five this season. Liriano gets it though.
Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Quality, reliability, and value. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search STIHL. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Kids are out. School is almost out. Now that's how you take in a game. This place is packed here this afternoon. Big crowd expected tomorrow. Francisco Lariano leads it off in a ground ball hit to the right side. Tricky hop there for Colton Long. Makes the play easily. One down. Five in a row set down by John Lackey. I want to say congratulations to longtime Cardinals photographer Jim Heron, who's retiring, and he threw out our first pitch today. And for so many fans that have come down to the ballpark and been on the field, Jim Heron has probably taken your picture over the last 40 years. He is as class an act as, a, as they come. Very patient man, I should say, too. Oh, you know, tremendously so. And, and he has done such a great job. And I should also congratulate once again, I know you and Tim did, Joe Cunningham. There was a, a promotional uh, event a couple of days ago renaming a part of this ballpark Cunningham Corner and he was told that it was a Jim Heron retirement party but it really was to honor him that's great over Wong and into right and Joe's here at the ballpark with his grandchildren today we saw the kids that are here at the ballpark Joe was a, an outstanding player but really an innovator as he worked for the Cardinals over the years MLB.tv catch any game out of market also have highlights, live look-ins all across the league. It's MLB.tv. A picture that I'm very fond of, my office at home, myself and Jack Buck. Jim Heron pulled me aside at the old ballpark. This is almost 20 years ago. And I said, Jim, I, I really don't want to take the picture. I, I'm not really big into that. It's no big deal to me. I was, you know, early 20s. And he said, no, no, no. He said, you're going to want this picture. Trust me. And it's one that I cherish. And Jack Buck signed it to me. And anybody that you know grew up here in St. Louis, you idolized, and especially if you got in this business, Jack Buck. And it's a picture that uh, I'm very thankful that Jim Heron made me take. A prized possession for me. Good forethought on Jim's part, and look back at being able to work games with Jack Buck. Both you and I can say that, and. and it's just something that's so special and the picture will help you remember some of those things but just the just the ability to sit next to him and understand the history of the game and how you bring broadcast to fans and connect with them Jack did it better than anybody you always used to say describe what you see don't look at the notes when you're doing radio specifically not TV he said you're broadcasting to those in hospitals the blind runner goes Molina no ball gets away Polanco on his way to third and he may try to score and Colton Long may be hurt on the play throw is tailing into the runner tried to make the tag Chris Conroy the medical department of the Cardinals out to check on Colton Long well, it's a very vulnerable type play for a middle infielder to try to catch a ball when the runner's sliding in and you risk kind of hyperextending your arm and the ball and the runner arrive at the same time. And they're checking out Colton right now. He certainly was in pain initially. So many different things that could happen on that play at thumb. Really checking his stability right now, Chris Conroy. Elbow hyperextending that, the wrist. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen on that play. Mm. Cardinals are ready with a short bench. Pete Cosma would be a logical choice to come in if one cannot continue to play. So the ball arrives, Polanco arrives. 
and hit right on his arm at the same time, kind of bends it back. Looked like he kind of slid into the forearm area, but you just don't know what is hurt there on Colton. And it'll be interesting to see how he swings the bat after that. Air charge to Molina, his first infield is in. Stolen base for Polanco, number eight to lead the Pirates. Count of one ball, no strikes. Josh Harrison was five RBIs this year at the plate. Outfield is straight away. Tough error on Yadier Molina. The throw really wasn't very far off the bag, but a lot of times that will happen on the throw. You see that happen with outfielders throwing the ball, hits the runner, bounces away. It was a bad bounce for the Cardinals, too. In fact, the players backing it up. Ground ball, base hit, left side. Harrison gives the Pirates a 1 0 lead. So, again, in this series, just like last night, the Cardinals will have to come from behind. Oh, Harrison, such a big part of the Pirates' offense the last couple of years, the slow start, but he handles this pitch. And you put the ball in play, good things happen, especially with a drawn in infield. Now McCutcheon. So now it's up to Lackey to do what Lance Lynn did last night after that early Pirate lead. No Moss. First pitch popped up. Carpenter calling for it. Right on the line and puts it away for the out. This is going to be outstanding on Monday night. We will have the official announcement of the Cardinals class, the Hall of Fame class of 2015. Who will be inducted? Find out at 6. That's an exclusive announcement right here on your home of the Cardinals, Fox Sports Midwest. August 15th will be the ceremony, but we'll announce the four that are going in Monday night at 6. And 6.30 we'll have the pregame show, 7 o'clock, Cubs and Cardinals. So if I give you a little piece of paper, no. will you write down no. who they are? No, sir. Man. Nope. Well, I'm going to watch it anyway. I'm going to watch the show, so I guess I'll just find out. Only a handful of people know, Rick, and you're not in our inner circle. As far as you know. <laughs> Somehow I think you know. <laughs> well, we'll all know on Monday. Six o'clock, tune in. Bill DeWitt, Cardinals president, will make those announcements at 6 on Fox Sports Midwest. That's driven into right center field off the bat of Neil Walker. Harrison on his way to third. Two out base hit, and that extends the inning to Starling Marte. Fourth hit for the Pirates, and this is what you think about when you think about the Pirate offense. Harrison getting a hit, and Neil Walker coming up with a two out hit. This guy can, this guy can swing the bat, and Maybe that's not such a bad location, but Walker looked very comfortable with that swing, and Harrison runs well. There's not many in this lineup that don't run well. You know, Harrison, McCutcheon, Polanco, Walker runs well. They can be a scary team. There's Starling Marte. We're talking about Joe Cunningham. He played seven years with the Cardinals, was a two-time All-Star, but as you mentioned, his impact probably greater in so many years after his playing career was through. School programs, ticket sales, corporate sales. Joe really just a tremendous ambassador for the St. Louis Cardinals. No balls and two strikes. We talked about Clint Hurdle earlier, Dan, and he said this offense is going to come around at some point, and it's just good to see Clint kind of getting around better. He's had, as you mentioned on the telecast the other night, a hip surgery. He's feeling better. He's kind of been able to go back to working out again, and I know he'll feel a little bit better if his team starts swinging the bat better. He's a very, very positive manager. Here's an 0-2. I'm not sure he could work out his jaws anymore. That man chomps more gum. He's always than working. Half the kids at St. Louis.
chop, there was, chop, there chop, was a time chop, last chop. year we'd see him chop and then go out and take out a pitcher, and it was painful to watch him walk. Oh, yeah. he, had, he had some really bad issues going on, but he's much healthier. Well, they go with the slider, the 0-2. One and two now on Marte. A lot of strikeouts, but power this year for Marte. Six home runs, 17 RBIs to lead their club. Average at 231. First time up, grounded to short. Got him. Marte chased. Strikeout number two for John Lackey. Pirates strand two, but they grab an early lead. Three could play center field at a high level. Then you have Harrison, Mercer, Walker, and Alvarez along the infield. Cervelli behind the plate, and that's a look at the defense for the Pirates, presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Colton Wong, Peter Borges, John Lackey, and we'll have to keep a close eye on Colton Wong with his swings to see if it has carried over the uh, stolen base by Polanco. So it was his left arm, and we're not sure exactly what it was on his left arm, but that was kind of the vulnerable side as he was catching the ball that was thrown down to second by Yachty. And so that's kind of his top hand, and, you know, you, you kind of get, see a guy every once in a while if that's stiff, they just kind of feel for the swing, and they don't really let it go, and you don't kind of turn on the ball quite so much. So we'll see if he goes the other way against Liriana, which, frankly, not a bad idea anyway. Broken bat, center field. Here comes McCutcheon diving, and he makes the play. What a catch. Andrew McCutcheon in center field. You talk about closing speed. My goodness. And we've talked about how McCutcheon plays deeper than a lot of center fielders do. Yet he read that ball well. A lot of times guys will play deep because they come in well. And he, they trust their ability to do that. When you can close like he does here, he also read the ball off the bat extremely well and could tell that it was not hit hard by Colt Wong. A lot of times you're fooled by the swing when a guy is jammed and breaks his bat, and you, you think they hit it harder than they really did. But he, he read that well, got a good jump, made a nice play. Remember late last night in the game, he was limping in the dugout. Apparently he's just fine because that was a tremendous catch in center field. 1-0 pitch to Peter Borges. In the air out to right center. It's well hit. Carries to the track. McCutcheon is there. Peter is taking much better at bats. So we we don't have a we can't really judge the actual distance as we look from Big Mac land and the view that you can get from there and a lot of great sights and places to sit here at Bush Stadium but the difference between where McCutcheon caught that first ball 
and that second ball, I would love to just go out there and measure that. And I think when fans get a chance to come on a big league field, they're amazed at that the most when they stand in the outfield and realize just how much ground a big league center fielder will cover. We see that when we do our Champions Club telecast. We're situated down the left field line, so you see the vastness of the field and how much the outfielders do have to cover. I, I would say the other thing, too, Rick, and we do show behind home plate, but the speed of the game and the pitches coming in from the green seats, let's say, right behind home plate, it's amazingly fast. If you had to guess, Dan, was that is that 150 feet? The difference between where McCutcheon caught those two balls? Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least. I mean, if it's 90 feet from home to first, he covered that ground and more just going back on the one ball and then coming in about the same distance, maybe maybe closer to 175 feet. And you better take the right angle. Gives you a pretty good idea of the ground that you have to cover. So don't make a false step. Game is really fast. Go get him. Good luck. The 2-2. And a walk for John Lackey. Second walk issued by Liriano. I recognize that little move. Done in Adam Wainwright's honor. I think he was the first one to do that. Good eye. I guess that's the official sign language for good eye. John Jay, Lackey the runner at first base, and a pitch taken outside. In his career, Liriano gets better as the season goes on. His April ERA is over five in his career. May, it's over four. June and July is when he gets better in terms of ERA and what he's done in his career just around three signed a three year extension to stay with the Buccos this past off season two balls in one strike the Pirates have done a really good job of looking at guys that are kind of on the scrap heap so to speak maybe a step or two from out of baseball Liriano was he was struggling to get a job and the Pirates detected a flaw in his delivery. And got him back to where he was with Minnesota, a premier pitcher in Major League Baseball. Cardinal strand a runner. And we head to the fourth.
Signals Nation. They'll have a brunch there coming up a week from tomorrow for Mother's Day. Get a ticket to the Hall of Fame. We were talking about how expansive the outfield is. Boy, it is a lot of ground to cover. We're going to take a look at these two catches by McCutcheon. Now it's 127 feet from home to second base. And McCutcheon catches his ball close to second base from second to the center field wall is about 275 feet. So on the second catch, he has to go back into that right center field gap and he gets close to the warning track. And so he may be about 200 feet away from where he caught that first ball. Really amazing the kind of ground you have to cover in a very short period of time for a major league center fielder. Pedro Alvarez. 211 average, four home runs. He's driven in 11. He struck out looking first time up. Go back to 2012. Pedro Alvarez hit 397 against the Cardinals. Seven home runs, 23 RBIs. 23 against one team in a year. Year after that, it was 190. Last season, 217. So the Cardinals obviously have made the adjustment. Well, I think other teams have as well. His, his production's gone down some, but I, I think he's such a field hitter, and you know, you labeled him as a classic power hitter, which I think is true. And those guys can be streaky. So you just don't want to catch him while he's hot. Strikes out for the second time. Three sliders in a row there from John Lackey. And his third strikeout. Chevy Fox tracks. Let's take a closer look. Well, that may be an indication on what the book is on him right now is throwing that slider, getting him to chase because really expanded his zone there. That pitch not even close to being a strike. Really, Lackey's best pitch, as we mentioned at the top, is that slider down and in. Francisco Cervelli grounded out to short first time up. To second, Wong, bobbled and safe. Cervelli is aboard. The T Mobile game changer for today, and that's the fourth air on Colt Wong this season. Team ERA 2014 and 15. The Cardinals 2.36 ERA, and right there with them, Pittsburgh. Two of the best pitching staffs in baseball. They're anchored by strong bullpens, and, and it's why both the Cardinals and the Pirates have, have been in every game this year. The Cardinals have won a lot of close games. Pirates haven't had that yet, but, boy, when you pitch well, you're going to win games. They're waiting for their offense to come around, and the Cardinals, I think, have found their offense for the most part. Both these pitchers really rely on that slider, especially Liriano. Against him this season, teams hitting 086 against that slider. And they're hitting above 300 against Lackey, who's throwing it more this year. Well, that goes back to the point I made about him making mistakes. I think if you throw a slider, and it's a good one. It's very tough to hit. It's got that little dot on it. It looks like a fastball. It breaks down out of the zone. Very tough to lay off. If you throw a slider that's poor and hang it, your hand actually comes underneath the ball. It spins sideways. It doesn't have that same little dot on the ball that you can see. And it sits up about belt high. And you and I could hit that. You could. I'm questionable. <laughs> actually, we'd, neither one of us could. <laughs> but big league hitters can which is the more important point. And so the hanging slider to me, it's like it's like a bad fastball is what it is. It's just sitting there. Remember when Mark DeRosa was in St. Louis, he said, I'd love to get a cement mixer coming my way. That yeah. was his yeah. it's like terminology a, of, a, uh, of a hanging slider. Just spinning. The one-two. 
can see that slider has been effective for Lackey and with the right handers especially with a runner on you get the reach potential ground ball then you get your double play if you were if you were Yadier Molina catching John Lackey you would see out of his hand whether there's a little dot on the ball or not if there's a little dot it's a good slider now you can't pick that up on television but what you can see is whether the ball has downward break to it or not if the slider breaks down and away from a right hander it's a good one if it just breaks away it's flat and it's one of those cement mixers you were talking about one two and he waved at it and a strikeout that's a good one there what a great deal on Cardinals tickets fill up at Phillips 66 eight gallons or more now until September 24th and receive up to 50 percent off on a pair of tickets to a home game for more information visit Cardinals.com slash Phillips 66 two strikeouts in the inning and for this afternoon for John Lackey Liriano grounded out his first time up and he hits it out to center field Borges going back he was playing in and his speed makes the dips, uh, makes up the difference and makes the catch one nothing midway through four. Wide. Last night, Matt Adams, the walk-off for St. Louis to drive in John Jay. Matt had a walk-off homer last year against the Pirates. Colton Wong as well, back-to-back -back games. Matt Adams sitting today with Liriano on the mound, but certainly available to pinch hit late. Just Pretty thinking good. of firepower yeah, there with Hayward and Adams. He's thinking about the same thing, and at some point, you know, if the Pirates and Liriano are able to kind of keep a lead and get late, you're going to see really right-handed part of their bullpen and Melanson, the closer, and maybe Adams or and or Hayward come come into play. Liriano finishing up his warm-up tosses. He'll get Carpenter, Holiday, and Peralta. Cardinals still searching for their first hit as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Francisco Liriano, if you're wondering, has thrown a no hitter. You yes, may remember May 3rd, 2011, while with Minnesota, it was at the Chicago White Sox. He walked six in that game. High, high pitch count. He struck out two. The opposing pitcher that night was Edwin Jackson, who had pitched a no hitter himself the year before. You mentioned that A.J. Burnett had one with a high number of walks, too, if nine. I remember. Yeah. Nine walks, seven strikeouts. <laughs> it's not the way you draw it up, but you take it. It must be a nightmare for a manager because oh. you can't take him out, you would think, and the pitch count is getting so high. Never forget Santana against the Cardinals and picking up that no-hitter for the Mets, and I, I talked to Terry Collins about that in spring training this year. 
I started to ask him the question about that night. And he said, I'll stop you there. Yes, it was my toughest night ever in baseball. Yeah. He was tormented whether or not to take him out or leave him in. And Johan Santana, after that game, was never the same. I can't recall the score of that game. I thought the Mets had a pretty decent lead in that game. So, I mean, it may sound like it's not good baseball and not, you know, maybe appropriate to for the integrity of the game. But I just assume the pitcher just throw BP the last couple of innings. I mean, stay, you got a chance to throw a no hitter. Let him just kind of flip a couple of BP fastballs up there without full exertion and say, instead of taking them out, it's not like you, your body's going to tire out, but you worry about the arm. So, you know, forget throwing sliders. Just maybe he'll, they maybe they'll hit three line drives at guys and, and you get the no hitter, but you don't risk the injury. I don't know how you get a pitcher to do that, but be pretty See, tough to convince him, wouldn't it? It would be. Carpenter now with two strikes on him again. Well, Matt Carpenter made 329 straight starts in the leadoff spot the last three years. And Mike Matheny came to Carp several days ago. Said, you know what, I'm thinking about switching up the batting order. And Carpenter strikes out here to take some of the pressure off Jason Hayward. And this move, small sample size, but initially has paid off. Inside the division, we were talking about this earlier. Lowe's never stop improving. The Cardinals inside the division, 11 and 4. Mets have been good in the East, Houston, American League West, Detroit in the Central, and the Chicago Cubs also in the Central. Lowe's never stop improving. Danny, that was an 8 0 Cardinal loss to Santana in that no hitter. And, and just to kind of follow up on that point, there was a time in this game where pitchers used to, I'm talking about way back now, 1800s, where pitchers would pitch every other day. Right. So you can't tell me they were th throwing 100% in their 400th inning of the year. I mean, you're just kind of flipping it up there, aren't you? Without doubt, with, you know, how could you not do it that way? Look at Cy Young's numbers, just one time look up his numbers here's a 1-1 one, one. Cardinals coaching staff Billy Miller on the far left John Mabry David Bell Mike Matheny one two is a great play by Harrison to rob Matt Holiday. I know he's not hitting well. He's got a base hit RBI today. But Harrison can play just about every position and play it at a plus level. Good player. About three years ago, he was just an extra guy on the bench that they thought, well, we'll keep him around because he can do some things well and got forced into playing every day and became a lot more than that. At one point, he was property of the Chicago Cubs. Alvarez playing third. Play is not made. Two outs, nobody on for Johnny Peralta, who is flying to center field. A broken bat popped up. Neil Walker is over, and Liriano has not allowed a base hit through four innings here at Bush Stadium. We head to the fifth. We'll see Harrison bat second moments ago. Great play to rob Matt Holiday.
All right, guys, thanks. Top of the lineup for John Lackey to deal with. Further the point made by Al Roboski. Mike Matheny took over in 2012. The Cardinals have played in 143 one run games. Lowest total in the National League. Meanwhile, the Pirates have had close games and are among the league leaders in that time frame. And that nice lady here at the ballpark probably knows that because she's reading it in the Cardinals magazine. If you're going to read at the ballpark, that is the only thing that we allow. Give me your notes. <laughs> Got to get rid of them. Two balls and one strike. Looks like the hat you wore on the road last week, Danny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a two two. And that's a base hit into right field. Jay over to cut it off. And Polanco is two for three. Next time you're looking for great seats, get to StubHub. No surprise fees at checkout. Price you see, the price you pay. The official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals, it's StubHub. Really enjoyed wearing that bonnet on the road trip. We had a throwback. You know, I think it was with the Orioles when they were in town and we dressed up as old time broadcasters. We had the, <laughs> the fedora, I guess. You know, don't give the players any ideas because you know they do that to each other on the, oh, sure. the, the rookie hazing day. That might be, uh, may be an idea. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Wainwright's uh, watching our broadcast and he's not here at the ballpark today as he is recovering. And I'm sure he's spending a lot of his time thinking about things like that. My favorite is when they dressed up as superheroes. Remember the Cardinal players doing that. That was. It was a trip from San Francisco that they did that. I believe Shane Robinson was Wonder Woman. That one kind of sticks out in my head a little. Oh yeah. I do remember that. By the way, in the Cardinals magazine, read about Adam Wainwright, what he did with his trip in the offseason. All the money that he raises going to such a great cause. 1 1 pitch. Harrison gets the bunt down. This will be a tough play. Lackey to first, and out as Reynolds stayed on the bag. Some agility there by Mark Reynolds. That was not an easy play to make. We've already seen ball and runner arriving at the same time at second base, and the same thing happened right there at first base. He was shielded a bit by the runner and somehow caught the baseball. Lackey's quick to get to it, but there's the ball, the runner, and it actually goes on the right side of Harrison. He's got to catch that ball blindly. This is not on the infield side of Harrison. It's on the foul territory sign you can see the reaction of Mark Reynolds that's a terrific play so one out nobody on infield in for Andrew McCutcheon McCutcheon single to right that was against the shift and also popped out to third with the runner on one for two today outfield is straight away You have to be careful with uh, McCutcheon here. You're not walking him, but you know how much of a threat he is, even off to a bad start. Nice crowd again here at Bush Stadium, 40,000 plus at every game so far this season. The 2-0.
3 0 on McCutcheon. 333, his average with runners in scoring position. And he walked him. First walk issued by John Lackey. And the batter will be Neil Walker. Walker has been hit by a pitch and a single to right center. One out, runners at the corners. The crowd is ready to get into this game. However, the Cardinals no hits, trailing one nothing, and now Lackey in trouble. Make the right pitch, you get out of it. Let's see if they want to do some running with McCutcheon. Not running. And a strike, one ball, one strike. Little sinker down and away, maybe set up after that slider. High percentage of sliders today from Lackey. It is his best pitch, but every once in a while you keep him honest with that fastball, maybe down and away, a little sink. Yachty sets up away. There it is. Walker did not cooperate, however. I mean, John Lackey has thrown a ton in his career. Include the postseason spring training, 17th professional season for Lackey. And it's it's fun to watch guys like this pitch that don't have the overpowering stuff anymore, but they know how to pitch. He dropped down a little bit on that one, yes, too. We saw that in his last start almost as if he invented it in the middle of his last start, trying to maybe get that downward movement, show him something different. One two pitch. Bob Gibson Cy Young. In their career and I think it's the most. Amazing stat for Bob Gibson. 749 complete games for Cy, Cy Young but. 251 wins for Gibson. 255 complete games. Think about that. More complete games and wins. It's incredible. Cy Young, by the way, 11 seasons of 40 or more starts. Wow. Popped up. Peralta. Big out. Runner stay put, two down. It's a big, big out. We may come back to this moment when this game is over and realize just as we did last night that. The key moment happens in the middle of the game. Off speed pitch down in the zone. Walker had a pitch maybe he could handle it. He popped it up and Lackey could escape here in the fifth inning as Lance Lynn escaped in the sixth inning last night. Starling Marte is stranded four today. And runners at first and second, grounded out to short to end the top of the first. Then struck out with runners at first and third to end the third. First pitch to him. And it's ball one. So Cy Young that furthers your point you were talking about with guys that. were throwing every other day but 40 or more starts 11 different seasons for Cy Young. They were playing 156 games max at the time. Not sure if it was even less than that before it expanded to, I guess it was 154, then 162 games. But prior to that, I think it was less than that. So he's starting quite often and he's finishing. Two balls, no strikes. The slider at times a plus pitch today for Lackey, the fastball. Location a little bit of an issue. Ground ball. Peralta gloves, throws, and out. Get Starling Marte. 
Will they challenge? To the naked eye, I almost thought he was safe. We'll see if they challenge. Good call. That giveaway is tomorrow. Get here early. 25,000 fans, 16 and older, entering with a ticket. We'll take home the adult performance T-shirt. Also, the kids' tickets. Free voucher for a future home game is tomorrow. Ice cream Sunday. so head out to the ballpark. Cardinals still searching for their first base hit. Here's Mark Reynolds who struck out. Liriano has struck out two. It was FCA night at the ballpark last night, and Mark Reynolds spoke to a lot of kids. Did did a great job and before the game, speaking to about 1,300 students involved in FCA, and also ended up having a pivotal role in the game too. His infield hit came at the right time for the Cardinals to get him back in the game and. Set the table for what Matt Adams did later on. You're to be congrat uh, congratulated with all the kids and the families that were here last night. 50 years celebrating service to the St. Louis community, FCA, and Charlie James was here. And Charlie was uh, one of the players that I guess you'd best say tried to replace the Stan Musial. But Charlie was involved in FCA's beginnings 50 years ago and was a local. Product who went on to be a terrific major league player, could have played NFL football too, and Charlie, a dear friend. One and two, the count. The next two Reynolds. Ground ball slowly hit to short, taken there by Mercer. One away. Liriano, why is he so good here today? Well, he's good because he's keeping the ball down and he has that kind of befuddling late movement. And you noticed it on one of his sliders and you said, wow, that's that's a sharp late break. And that's exactly what he does. You just you don't see it until it's too late. And then you see the break and, and there's just not much you can do with it. You get a defensive swing like we just saw from Mark Reynolds because guys aren't comfortable at the plate. Popped up off the bat of Molina. Neil Walker. Two down. BJC healthcare difference maker what the Cardinals do with two outs like in this spot Cardinals at 283 average the BJC healthcare difference makers still looking for their first hit here's Colton Wong who was robbed by center fielder Andrew McCutcheon back in the third he's 0 for 1 McCutcheon came flying in from center took a hit away
Ground ball. Alvarez, Liriano leads it perfectly. This crowd wants to cheer. Not much going on. One nothing. Pittsburgh Cardinals are hitless. Twenty three years of age or younger to win each of his four, uh, first four starts in a season. Tomorrow he tries to make it five and zero. Oh. Budweiser what's on tap Vance Worley and Michael Waka. Fred Frankhouse. Opened five and zero oh in nineteen twenty seven and Waka will try to join Frank. Much going on. I'll give you some cash. Go get us uh, some dipping dots. I am thinking the same way, partner. I mean, you fly, I, I you know, I'll buy. You okay? <laughs> hey, I might not come back. I might just enjoy that particular location and 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 not only have mine but also have yours. Shocking. Shocking. Yeah, see what no kind of Rick. line? Oh, oh you be you be cutting in line too, folks. Do you know who I am? I'm Rick Horton. <laughs> Make way, make way. Excuse me, very important person coming through. Emergency here. Young lady, move aside. Kids, well, you'd push over those two kids. <laughs> you'd be right behind that guy right there because you wouldn't mess with the guy in the blue shirt. <laughs> no, it is first come, first serve at the dip and Dots. I happen <laughs> to know that. Take a look at that last delivery. There's a slider. We've seen a lot of them. Perfect location down and in. Steady dose to Alvarez. Here's a one two. Pedro has struck out twice. Lackey has struck out four. The change of speeds on him have been curveball, slider in, slider away, curveball, slider in, slider in. I couldn't believe it that one night when you pushed over those kids to get to the hot dogs. Wow. Two two. Careful, Dan. You know my mom may be watching. And oh, yeah, I don't want to disappoint her. She actually likes me. She does. And you? Well, she, I know she likes you. I know that much. Tells all her friends about how she got to be on a telecast with you and you interviewed her. It's one of the great days in uh, Fox Sports Midwest history. One of the most painful in mine. You were so nervous. It was. <laughs> I was. The best. The three two. I was glad when it was over. It was <laughs> terrific. <laughs> Mother's Day, right? It was. Couple years ago, when you said, "Tell us about the real <laughs> Ricky Horton," <laughs> I cringed. Ah, one of the good guys, Rick Horton. Three-two pitch to Alvarez. We just like to give you a lot of trouble, but I could tell folks about the real Rick Horton on the golf course, who does give the trouble back in a private setting. All bets are off then. Exactly right. Hmm. 
Three two to Alvarez. And a walk and Lackey. Stares back at the home plate umpire that's Mike Winter. Second walk issued by John. I got the sense and I could lip read. A little bit better than. I wish I could right there but I, I think he's more mad at himself. For not throwing a strike. If I could paraphrase. And walking a leadoff hitter in a one run game is. Something that will really frustrate a pitcher so you get it out you deal with it you say what you say and you just go to work. And a base hit into right. Off the bat of Cervelli. So walk a single now the eighth place hitter Jordy Mercer. They start to scramble in the Cardinals bullpen and get loose. Well, the bottom of the order produced the offense for the Pirates in game one of this series. Cervelli began with a base hit. Jordy Mercer at a double. Burnett helped his own cause. So the Pirates didn't get a lot of office offense, but what they had came from the bottom of the order. Fouled back. You know, the Cardinals. Have used at least three relievers in each of the last four games. By the way, all wins, but it does give you an idea that it's a short bench. They carry more in their bullpen to cover some of these innings. The extra pitcher when Cooney went out, Miguel Sokolovich, is available. And a fly ball lifted to center. Alvarez will he tag at second catch made by Borges throw comes into second base Alvarez safely sliding into third. Runners at the corners and Francisco Liriano will be the hitter. And we remarked after his second at bat. He has swung the bat well today now he's 0 for 2 but has hit. The ball sharply twice once to second the other time a line out to center field. But an 092 career hitter right. and what. Teams have gone to doing really, and I think the last 10 years, he's going to go down and talk to Rick Sofield, who's the third base coach this year. Nick Leva has moved from third to first base for the Pirates, former Cardinal coach and manager in the minor leagues. But what teams have started to do is to just put that extra runner in scoring position, bunt with the pitcher here. Even though there's a chance to drive in that runner from third base, I think for years this was not done, but it's become more standard operating procedure for Liriano to bunt. Get that second guy out there for Polanco to drive in too. I think too many times they had pitchers hitting into double plays in this particular situation with defensive. And it swings. makes sense. It does. It? it really does. There it is, the bunt. And it's not like Alvarez is flying down the line. He's just watching it, monitoring the situation, and trying to get that second man in scoring position. But it could also turn into a safety squeeze type situation if the bunt is done perfectly and. Alvarez believes he can beat Carpenter to the ball and then to the plate then you take off and you know on a bunt Carpenter's going to have to charge so as he charges Alvarez can follow him. Oh one pitch. Bun is down Molina. A look to third. To Wong covering the bag at first and then got back in position. There's a perfect example of Yachty's looking the runner back but he doesn't have to go back because there's nobody covering third. Well, join us for Academy Sports and Outdoors Autograph Nights. The first of six Autograph Nights is Wednesday, May 6th. So next Wednesday against the Cubs, two current Cardinals will sign autographs at the Ford Plaza for fans 15 and under. Two former Cardinals will sign for fans of all ages. For details, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. So an intentional walk here of Polanco to load him up for Josh Harrison. This is what the Pirates did last night to get to Matt Adams, and he burned him. And Harrison does have the lone RBI in this ballgame today. So, third walk, first intentional issued by John Lackey. So, the Pirates bunted as we expected they would to put two runners into scoring position. And we'll look at it one more time. The bunt is laid down right in front of the plate. Yachty picks it up. Everybody wants him to check the runner back to third and he does take that quick look at third but 
what's to hold the runner on that base? He, there's nobody covering third. So he, he could have come down even further. He could have come down even further and perhaps scored when Yachty threw the ball to first base. It's just the the peril of that play. And, and I believe he could have scored. If he had taken three or four more steps, I'm not sure what Yachty does. He's got to throw to first, but... By the time he throws to first, I think Alvarez may have been able to score. Base is loaded. Sixth inning last night. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Lance Lynn pitches out of trouble. And really saved the game for the Cardinals. Here we have bases loaded. Sixth inning again. Two outs. Can Lackey pitch out of this jam? The 1 0 pitch to Josh Harrison. So Ooh, Clint Hurdle, Clint Hurdle last night walks Matt Holliday, picks his poison to face Matt Adams, and he delivers the game winner. Mike Matheny has to make a tough decision. Walks the young hitter Polanco, goes with the lefty righty, and pitches to a guy who was top three in the National League in batting a year ago. 1 1. Popped up. Is it playable near the stands? And the catch is made. Reynolds is there. Lackey out of the jam. Slash Bud Bash and Jack Clark will be signing autographs for fans for the Bud Bash. Don't miss it. 85 players will be back all season long. The celebration of that championship team. I'm going to pose a question to you. No hitter going on right now as we're in the sixth inning. Francisco Liriano. The unwritten rules of baseball. If Peter Borges drops down a bunt. Bad. Good. Indifferent. Where well, are we now? Let's just say if Peter Borges did it and it worked, I'd be happy and think he did a good baseball play, but I'd probably be bothered by it if I was the Pirates. So can you do it? Yes. Is there a potential of that bothering somebody? Well, yes. Now, I will say this. I think the one way the Pirates can keep it honest is you have to guard against the bunt with Peter Borges. So play your infielders in as you would normally. Don't, don't expect him to do something that's against his best judgment if you're kind of conceding that he won't do it because there's a no hitter going. Don't have to worry about it now. Base hit Peter Borges into center. This is as well as we've seen him swing the bat in a Cardinal uniform. Really it's just it's an uptick 
this past week, and he looks good. Quick hands right here. And, you know, he was overmatched a year ago with a good fastball, and he would chase breaking balls. But that's a quick bat. And, and I, we have not seen the steady feet of Peter Borges. I mean, a year ago, he was sliding around in the batter's box, and you, you'd have to believe that the hip, hip injury that he had played into that lack of balance. You know, a couple different things to think about here. You've got Hayward against a lefty. They didn't want to overexpose him against Liriano. If you were going to bunt in this spot, potentially, which you could now with Borges, the single, you could use a pitcher here and save Hayward for later. Well, I don't think he's going to bunt. And Clearly I, not. And I think if you had, certainly with, with Borges, you're thinking steal anyway. I think Pete Cosma would be another potential to use right here because he's a guy that runs well probably not going to hit into a double play as, as you think that way with Hayward already 30 attempts against Cervelli this year one ball one strike on Hayward made a tremendous play in right field yesterday now a shift and you mentioned this in the telecast last night how the Pirates from pitch to pitch will shift. They've done that here with Harrison. Totally different look. Harrison was playing third base five seconds ago. Not sure I agree with this. So he could drop down that bunt easily now. Lines it over Harrison. Borges, no one at the bag at third. Racing there. Jason Hayward, a single into center field. Nobody out. Runners at the corners for the Cardinals. I'm not sure I've ever seen a shift done on a particular pitch where they pick exactly where Hayward right. is going to hit the ball, but just a little bit out of the reach of Harrison. And as you mentioned, with Harrison no longer playing third, that means nobody's playing third. So Peter Borges, who probably would have gone there anyway, can just kind of jog the third if he wanted to. And Cardinals got something going here in the sixth inning. You really open yourself up if you play that defense to the bunt with a guy like Hayward, especially against a tough lefty lefty matchup. I wonder if that was in his mind to, to drop one down. Regardless, he gets the hit, and now it's John Jay. Popped up left side. Out of play. Cardinals, if they want to be, they could be aggressive with Jason Hayward. Got good speed at first base. Oh, one one pitch. It's sharply to Alvarez. Steps on the bag and then throws it away. This game is tied. Borges scores. It's 1-1. Put the ball in play and good things happen. Alvarez makes the play, steps on the bag immediately. Actually, a nice play by Alvarez. No chance to get the runner at second. Really, not much of a chance to get Borges either. So that is not going to be an error on Alvarez. It's just a, a throw that, well, wasn't a very good one. But you credit Borges. Hayward, good speed on the base pass. It makes a difference. 25 errors by Alvarez last year, primarily throwing errors. Now Carpenter with one out. Matt has walked and struck out. Seven for 13 with runners in scoring position this year. Go ahead run at second base. the Pirates have to feel as frustrated as they possibly can be right now. The Cardinals have dominated them at this ballpark, winning 13 of the last 16. Last night, had St. Louis on the ropes with the bases loaded. Moments ago, they did. John Lackey pitches out of a jam. And oh, by the way, they've stranded 10. Here's an 0-1. 
One ball, one strike. One more look at the play by Alvarez. Nice on the short half. Steps on the bag, throws it away. The Pirates got to the ball quickly. It's really a big play that Hayward is not on third base right now. That ball bounced off the wall. And we'll watch Hayward here in a moment on that route to second. Carpenter with a fly ball into right. Polanco, strong arm, fires it back in, and that could be a 2 1 lead potentially for St. Louis because of the play that you're talking about. Well, one of the things he had to be careful of is maybe Alvarez is going to step on the bag and throw to second base. That was one of his choices on that play prior. And here's Hayward with that lead. He knows the ball may come here. I've got to do a slide here and be careful. And then by the time he popped up, he's got no chance to advance. Here's Holiday, who's been outstanding this year with runners in scoring position. He's hit into a 6-4-3 double play and was robbed by Josh Harrison down at third. 6-25 average in this spot. Pedro Alvarez since 2010 has committed 115 errors, third most of all players in that time frame. Ian Desmond, Starlin Castro, then Alvarez. One ball, one strike. McCutcheon shading Holiday a bit to right center. Now the 1 1 from Francisco Liriano. Both Holiday and Peralta, very good numbers against Liriano. First base is open, Holiday at 350, but Peralta. Just behind that with a couple of home runs against Liriano. Out of play. McCutcheon, Walker, Marte due up in the seventh. We're tied up. 1 1 here at Bush Stadium. And the one two pitch from Liriano. A strikeout of Holiday. Third strikeout for Liriano.
I think the first pitch, you know, he says, all right, that's the outside portion of the plate. The pitch he's called out on is inside. Let's take a look. Well, that's, that's a strike one there. That's a slider that looks like it might have been outside. Holiday questions a bit whether or not that's a strike. Then Liriano comes in with a slider way off the plate on the inside, and he gets rung up, and that plate is way too wide as far as Matt Holiday is concerned, and he was not happy. He didn't get tossed, but he, he got his say with our home plate umpire, Mike Winter. You always hear you can have one side of the plate, but not both sides of the plate. Chevy called to the pin already appearance number 12 for Seth Manus. Good job by John Lackey giving his team a chance to win this game and got out of three jams in this game. Six innings and the Pirates strand 10 against Lackey. I was talking with Seth the other day and I said how are you able to do this day in and day out and maybe you can speak to this being a left-hander that's always used. You fair, uh, fill various roles with the club in that regard, but every day he expects to come pitch in a game. Well, he's a guy that's not a maximum effort pitcher. There's a lot of guys in the Cardinals bullpen and, and, and in baseball that throw as hard as they can on every pitch, but he's just a smooth guy, and I think he takes good care of himself. He works out hard, and, and he just has that kind of arm where he can bounce back day after day. Neil Walker hit by a pitch, a single into right center. And he doesn't have a lot of wasted effort mechanically, and he doesn't have a lot of wasted pitches as well. I mean, he, he's going he's gonna to come right after you. A lot of strikes, a lot of ground balls, a lot of quick innings for Seth Maynard. Mazda game summary. Let's get you caught up if you're just joining us. We're in the top of the seventh. 1-1 game, Liriano still in it. Had a no-hitter going into the sixth. Harrison one for three with an RBI. Lackey, as Rick mentioned, pitching out of trouble. Really minimizing the damage. And John Jay, low an RBI for St. Louis. Starling Marte hitless, 0 for 3. Talking about some of the records of Gibson, and we brought Cy Young into it, and about guys that would just pitch often and every day, and we see Seth Maness coming out day after day. And it, Looked up an old pitcher, ha old Haas Radburn. In 1884, he went 59 and 12. <laughs> 59 Set and 12. 73 starts, 73 complete games. That's an infield hit with the speed of Marte. 678 innings pitched. In one year. In one year. For the Providence Grays. I'm going to say... Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and say some of those numbers are records that will never be broken. Cardinals bullpen 18 and two thirds. This homestand only 13 hits one earned run. Here's Alvarez who has walked struck out twice. Bullpen has been very steady. Would you think about Randy Choate in this spot who had a key out in the game last night in game one. He was up earlier. It's classically the kind of spot that you use. Randy Choate. Clint Hurdle then could counter with Sean Rodriguez who had a couple of hits off the bench last night. You may see that if it took place. That may be part of the thinking going on here. One oh pitch slicing down the left field line in trouble that ball is fair and it is touched by a fan so a ground rule double for Pedro Alvarez Cardinals may have caught a break because of the speed of Marte and Holiday was making sure that the umpire saw that somebody touched that baseball and he kind of signaled right away to make sure that that was a dead ball and Marte couldn't score. I believe you're right. There's the ball just barely fair, about a foot fair, and it bounces up, and there it hits. Well, the fan didn't touch it. The ball hit him. And Holiday had already signaled to third base umpire that the ball is out of play. And Clint Hurdle wanted to make sure he gets an explanation. Are you sure that's true? 
Francisco Cervelli reached on an air. He's grounded out and also single to right. And a strike. Manus said he learned his sinker from his college roommate, a teammate. And it became a, a field pitch for him. Changed the grip. It's taken him all the way to the big leagues. One and one. Here's a 1 1. So the ball hits the fan, and Marte, with his speed, had to be stopped at third. Ground ball. Carpenter stays down and makes the play. Score the setting for Seth Manus. The bullpen continues to roll. Time to stretch here at Bush. The Gateway Honda dealers will donate a thousand bucks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Beautiful afternoon here in St. Louis. Glad that you're with us on Fox Sports Midwest. Jim Hayes, Rick Horton, Dan McLaughlin, Pat and Al standing by just across the street at Ballpark Village with our post-game show. Been a good ball game. Tied up 1-1. The Pirates about hit the Cardinals 8-2. They have stranded 12 already today. Johnny Peralta, Mark Reynolds, Yadier Molina for St. Louis. Cardinals 16 and 6 for the first time since winning 18 of 24 back in 1944, which was a championship team for St. Louis. That team, 105 wins. And that was the All St. Louis World Series. Cardinals and Browns. Cardinals won that series four games to two. Stan Musial, that season, only hit 347. That's all? That's it. Down year for Stan. Billy Southworth, the manager that. Uh, Recent, team in 1944. Recently in the Hall of Fame. Right. 2 1 pitch. Now 3 and 1. You know, Dan, every game has its own personality, and you, you're not necessarily going to see one.
game that looks like the day before or the day before that. But today's game kind of shaping up like yesterday's game. A, a run for each team and the Cardinals with a chance maybe for a walk-off win late in the game. It has that feel right now. John Jay, doesn't it seem like he's always involved in walk-off wins for the Cardinals again last night scoring the winning run? It does. Matt Adams driving him in. Jay has scored five of the walk-off winning runs since 2010. Holiday's done it five times. Carpenter three. But John Jay right in the middle of things. 3-2 pitch. Lead off walk. Third walk issued by Liriano. Tonight, Fox Sports Live will get you caught up on a full day of NHL and NBA playoff action and today's MLB games. Fox Sports Live tonight on Fox Sports 1. See it simulcast right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Kentucky Derby. Mayweather Pacquiao. Cardinals baseball. Pretty, pretty good sports day. Your kids T-ball. Oh, yeah, I showed you highlights already from that on my phone. Actually, coach pitch. That's right, it was coach, coach pitch. pitch, yeah. Future stars. Ground ball, could be two. Out at second. Double play, 5-4-3 off the bat of Mark Reynolds. Cardinals have hit into two double plays today. Liriano. Plaza Tire Service. Yeah, he's been able to jam Reynolds in a couple of that bats, that little running fastball off the plate, and didn't get a lot on that swing, and the leadoff walk does not hurt Liriano. Often it does. Very uh, efficient here today with 83 pitches. That's it. It's Molina. Hits it in the air to left center field. Taken by Starling Marte. Lead off walk. A race with a double play. Molina flies out. We head to the eighth. It's 1-1. Let's go to our studio in a Bomberito sports update. All right, guys, looking forward to uh, seeing all the highlights around Major League Baseball coming up on the postgame show. Jordy Mercer will lead it off against Seth Manis. Second inning of work. Mentioned the story of this game 
in many ways missed opportunities for the Pittsburgh Pirates. They are one of five in this series. In terms of runners in scoring position. Check that one for eight. If you combine it both teams two for 13. Pittsburgh is stranded 12. Mercer. Over three today. Ground out, strikeout, and a fly out. The one two. Liriano has moved to the on deck circle. We mentioned his pitch count. It's been efficient, economical today, so he could stay in and go deep into this game. He just joined us, John Lackey. Six innings, six hits, one run. Foul ball. Here's a one two. Get out of play. Round ball slowly hit. Carpenter charging throws off balance and got him. Nice play. Matt Carpenter. Another ground ball for Manus. Nice play on the move by Matt Carpenter. And I think this really is explaining why no Randy Choate last inning against Alvarez. I think Mike Matheny realizing after the night game last night and the use of the bullpen, he wanted Manus to go two innings. How about Liriano, there's your base hit. We talked about it, how well he's swinging the bat. Well, and uh, picks up his first hit of the afternoon. He's not a very good hitter, but he doesn't know that today. <laughs> he's hit the ball hard three different times. He has. Doesn't look like an 092 hitter, does it? Not at all. Smoke that baby into center, and that'll be it for Seth Manus. A scoreless seventh. Gets one out in the eighth inning. And the Chevy call to the bullpen will take us to Randy Choate. No face Polanco. Struck him out last night. What about two days in a row? Ninety five four five zero nine five here at the ballpark today. Randy Choate finished up his warm up tosses. The Hyundai pitch arsenal for Randy. A little surprised to see the fastballs that high for Randy Choate at 62, but he'll use it every once in a while on the inside half against the left hander. Slider really his pitch where he tries to get out. So a little surprised. You're surprised. I'm shocked. Oh, OK. I thought it'd be the other way around. Yeah. I mean that slider is his pitch. Here's the former Brewer. 
Corey Hart, so they'll pinch hit Hart for Gregory Polanco. And time is called. Corey Hart, longtime Brewer, outfielder. Then he had issues with injuries, moved him to the infield, played first base, spent time with Seattle, now back in the National League with the Pittsburgh Pirates. One home run this year, hitting 211, four RBIs. I have a feeling there will be a time in this season where Corey Hart's going to get significant playing time and make a difference for this Pirate Club. You know, injuries happen, and who knows where it is. Not predicting that, but but when you're a fourth outfielder somewhere, you're going to get a chance to play. When healthy, he produced, too. Ran well. Last year began the season with Seattle, his first in the American League. He's played over a thousand games in the big leagues. Hit 203 in 68 games last year. Back in 2012, hit 30 home runs. The year before that, 26. A lot of strategy going on right now that I don't fully understand. I'm not sure if they're trying to give Harris a chance to get loose in the bullpen and they're stalling a bit. I mean, Randy Choke making a move to first base with Liriano there. I mean, that can't be, they can't be worrying about a steal. He's hardly ever on first base. He, he's not much of a runner. And Reynolds is kind of half holding him there. I just think they're trying to get Harris loose, perhaps. But maybe trying to figure out what they want to do with Corey Hart. Maybe something about signals too, because all the infielders came in. Maybe there's some relaying of the signs going on. Corey Hart, 10 years with Milwaukee. Now with Pittsburgh, and the first pitch is swung on and missed. This would not be an ideal matchup for Randy Cho. The fans have gotten the wave started. I think Jim Hayes had something to do with that. No doubt. You know, it's interesting. People say, well, you know, you don't have to use multiple signs without a guy on second base, but there are some base runners, and I wouldn't think Liriano would be one, and some coaches that can steal signs and give signals. Manny Mota was the best at that when he was a coach. He used to whistle on a breaking ball. <laughs> And you could you could hear him whistling, and all of a sudden I realized I, I was actually pitching in a game, and Manny Mota in winter ball was doing that, and we just had to go over to him and tell him stop whistling, and or you're going to get somebody hurt, or you're going to get somebody hurt. I love Manny Mota. It's not cheating. Part of the game. A lot more than people would expect. Would you agree? Yes. Trying to get an edge. With video in the game today, stealing signs is much easier. That's why you always hear about players saying that from series to series, the signs will change. And with player movement, another factor as well. Good sinking fastball in that last delivery from Randy Cho. The 2-2. Two -two. May have gotten away with one there. That one came across the inner half and Hart just a little late. Randy Cho would use or, or figure out a next level change up perhaps to use against right handers. I'd, not, I'd like to see him develop something to be able to get some more right handers out. That last sinker again that he threw to Hart the pitch before was a terrific pitch. And I think it makes you more valuable if you can get a lefty than a righty then come back and get the next lefty. They're not going to stack lefties just to make it easier for you. Two balls, two strikes. Big gap in left center. On the outside corner. Strikeout for Choate of Corey Hart. Choate last night got Polanco. 
today he gets Corey Hart and a huge strikeout. I was going to ask if that was on the corner or not, and perhaps I should have asked the corner of the batter's box. It's been a wide strike oh, zone my. today. Went against Matt Holliday earlier, this time for the Cardinals and Randy Choate. Josh Harrison will be the hitter. Mitch Harris coming on in our Chevy call to the pin. Three and a third, three hits. You struck out two, walk two, no home runs. And he'll come in as the spots are starting to become uh, increasingly difficult for Mitch Harris. And that means that he's pitching well and earning these spots. Late game, tied 1-1. Well, there's been a lot of close games the Cardinals have played in, which has given him that experience, and he has performed. And the more you perform, the, the, the tougher the spot you get thrown into. And he's shown well with his fastball. He throws hard. Also has that little split that he uses as a changeup, and I've been impressed by Mitch Harris. So two outs, and here is Harrison. Ground ball that is just foul, not by much. I was talking with Mitch the other day. He said he remembered vividly falling in love with the game of baseball at the age of four. Wasn't really recruited out of high school. Had a chance meeting with the U.S. Naval Academy coach visiting South Point High in Belmont, North Carolina, where he's from. And that's what led him to Annapolis, Maryland. A chance to continue his dream of playing baseball. Played four years there for the midshipmen. Off the glove of Harris. And he gets Harrison.
brought to you by Bud Light. It reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light. Colton Wong, Peter Borges. Then the ninth spot coming up is Rodriguez. We saw him with two hits off the bench last night. But the Pittsburgh Pirates takes over in right field. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Liriano, outstanding here today. He's allowed two hits through seven. And we're tied up 1-1. Here's Colton Wong. He was robbed by McCutcheon back in the third. The first pitch taken for a ball low. The corners are in. Outfield is straight away. Expect we'll see Rosenthal in the ninth inning for the Cardinals. And this would be a tough loss for the Pirates if the Cardinals could get a run across here against Liriano. And the story would be the left on base for Pittsburgh. 13. 13 is amazing. They've out hit the Cardinals 9 to 2, but one swing of the bat, and all of a sudden it's a bad day for Liriano. And a good day for St. Louis. One ball and two strikes. John Jay, the lone RBI for the Cardinals. Wong to the right side. Neil Walker yet to commit an error. He's perfect so far this season. Retires Colton Wong. Jim had the update on Randall Gritchick. This would be a Perfect kind of game to be able to perhaps use a Randall Gritchick to pinch hit for Harris here in the on deck spot. And Myatt Adams goes into the on deck circle for St. Louis, but you'd like to have that right handed power hitter off the bench and maybe a couple weeks away or, or maybe sooner, we'd hope to see Randall Gritchick. But perfect reason he's on this team. Room to the right side for Borges, pitch taken inside. Peter got the first hit for the Cardinals this afternoon. Single to center field and score the lone run. One for two. Peter's always had a quick bat. I don't think there's anybody that doubts that. You talk to scouts, they mention how quick his bat is. They'd love to see him go center or to right more often. Pitch like that, he'll pull off of sometimes. The other thing, too, with Borges, he, he had hip surgery, so he opens up a lot with his swing. Free and easy now and comfortable. Let's see what he can do. This time he strikes out. Strikeout number four for Liriano. He's not wearing down one bit. 92 pitches, four strikeouts. There's a late break of that slider, and it just hits. Got knee high. The hero of last night's game, Matt Adams. Tough test here against Liriano. He's had a good home stand. First pitch is pulled foul. The only thing I can say about this test is that Liriano's not better than Kershaw. So you never know. You never know. And Matt Adams, three for nine with a walk, three strikeouts against this tough lefty. I know where you're going with that, Mr. Horton. One ball, one strike. Think about his whole postseason. Mm. It was Kershaw, hit another home run off of Bumgarner, <laughs> who's unhittable in the postseason. The 1-1. One, one. No activity for the Pirates in their pen. Two balls, one strike. John Jay on deck. Shift on here for Adams. Goes the other way. Base hit again for the big man. Go ahead, run is aboard.
There's the swing of Adams. Hands inside the ball. Finishing the swing. Good balance. Well, let's see. Adams drove in John Jay for the game winner last night. Like you're thinking. Available position players for the Cardinals. Tony Cruz, Pete Cosma. Oh, one pitch to Jay. Ground ball slowly hit. Walker makes the play. Cardinals have stranded three today. Sends us to the ninth. We're tied up. Good ball game. Game two, one one. Cardinals victory. He'll deal with McCutcheon, Walker, and Marte. Chevy called to the pen. He's perfect in save opportunities. Eight for eight. The point eight four ERA. It really started in day one at spring training. Rosenthal has been sharp from the onset. A lot more strikes, a lot less pitches per batter for Trevor Rosenthal. The walks a little on the high side, but not nearly what we saw a year ago. And Still manages to get those strikeouts. You just want to see him pound the zone. McCutcheon, one for three with a walk. The Neil Walker and Starling Marte. 1 1 game here in the top of the ninth. Carpenter guarding the line at third base. Rosenthal nowhere close in the first two pitches, two balls and no strikes. He's trying to establish his secondary pitches first. I think it was a breaking ball first and a little cutter there and both of them just didn't quite have the feel for it and the idea he wants to get those for strikes so he can set up his fastball kind of work backwards. Bring it out. That didn't work either. A little jumpy there. Three and one. Cutchin with a line drive into right field and the catch is made. John Jay. Johnny on the spot right there. Well, let's go to Jim Edmonds and have him break down the. Oh, wait a minute. He's not with us anymore. Jimmy, call in. Wasn't that fun last night? It's great. For those that didn't see it, we had Jim Edmonds who was helping us 
break down outfield play and John Jay was in center field yesterday made some nice plays and that one as Jimmy said sometimes that line drive hit right at you is the toughest one to judge where to go but Martin was fortunate to get it out there strike to Neil Walker he touched upon it Rick so important for Rosenthal to get that first batter which he struggled with a year ago starts with first pitch strike fly ball into center Peter Borges out number two I didn't know they made those flip glasses anymore John Jay sporting the kind of the new style and Peter Borges going old school all kinds of glasses in the stands Starling Marte probably no flip glasses in the stands I would think would think it's another infield hit no way for Carpenter to get him not the way that he runs so Marte with a pair of infield hits and he almost beat out a ball first time up and in the fifth. Cardinals got six innings from John Lackey, inning and a third of Manus. Choate struck out Corey Hart. Harris got the final out last inning and now Rosenthal. There, there are times in the game where you don't really think speed matters that much, but when you're in a close game, you know how important it is. Marte a threat to steal. Rosenthal knows it. With a runner at first, the shift not nearly as pronounced, and it does play into the running game here. Peralta could be the guy that is covering in this particular spot, especially with the lefty up. Not running, and the pitch is a wild pitch and gets away from Molina. Speed makes you think about things. Who's covering second on a steal as the ball gets away? This one thrown in the dirt. Yachty tried to backhand it. Bounced high over his head, but even the outfielders are aware of the speed difference. Where do you play defensively to cut that run off at the plate? Two things to think about here as they go over signs, I'm sure, and some of the defense that they want to align with. But first base open, would you rather deal? With Cervelli or Alvarez. I think Derek Lilliquist is going to ask that question in about 10 seconds. I think he asked it at eight. It was eight, I counted. But that was about 10. Yep. And they want to make sure they have a little conversation about it. I think this is kind of a. Not a prescriptive conversation, but it's a what do you guys think? And I and I think Yachty gets a voice in that. I think Trevor gets a voice. Derek gets a voice. And Colton Wong listens. He's the fly on the wall. <laughs> he is the proverbial fly on the wall. <laughs> We have our answer. So intentional pass here to Alvarez. Rosenthal in his career in non save situations has been really good. ERA under 2, 1.77. In over 100 innings pitched in these types of spots. You can't say that's true of all closers. Exactly. And that's why I bring it up. Yeah, we've seen that over the years that sometimes closers have a hard time getting. Kind of revved up for a situation that does not result in a save and that's impressive to me that, that Trevor finds a way to do that. Of course it's not a safe situation but the game's still on the line tie score ninth inning. You can't get up for this. Why are you here. Sir Belly has been on base twice reached on an air by Wong. Also single to right grounded out twice. Tied up 1 1 here at the top of the night. Two outs. Strike one.
0-1 pitch into center field. Borges is there. The Pirates have left 15 on. Top of the lineup coming up. Fourteenth appearance. We saw him last night. He's in relief of Francisco Liriano, who goes eight innings, 98 pitches, one earned run, three hits allowed, three walks, struck out four. The story of this game is the bottom line. The Pirates just can't push a run across. They've stranded 15, and in the two games now, they've stranded 21. They have 10 hits today. And yet they look up and it's the bottom of the night. They're still playing 1 1. Well, they're in the game though because their starting pitching has been very, very good. And Liriano certainly deserved a victory today. And Watson's not going to be an easy guy to hit. A year ago, Dan, his record was 10 and 2 out of the Pirates' bullpen with a 1 6 ERA, an all star. And he appeared in 78 games. He's a workhorse and he's good. It's talking with some of the hitters today about Watson and his delivery to the plate. In particular on the lefties. You know he's not. Over the top so much he, he can hide a little yeah. bit. Yeah he hides it and slings it works from the first base side of the rubber. And actually steps. What the hitters were talking to me about is carpenter didn't like that one but. He steps at the left handed batter. Well, we'll look at the delivery of. Watson. There's the step kind of drops down a little bit and cross his body a little bit and. And throws it hard. Two balls one strike. Carpenter two for ten against this lefty. He has walked he has struck out and he's also flied out to right. Carpenter holiday Peralta for St. Louis. In on the hands of Matt Carpenter for strike two. <laughs> The 2 2. Strike out of Carpenter. We've had a lot of unhappy guys at the plate today with the strike zone being as wide as it is. And Matt frustrated at that pitch. That does catch the corner. I think he's still mad about the pitch on the other side of the plate. Holiday. Probably the most aggressive in his conversation with our home plate umpire. And a strike. Previous at bat, called out on strikes in the sixth. Pitch that was in and out. And he was talking about both sides of the plate. 
Here's the 0 1. Oof, what a cut there by Holiday. 0 and 2. I'm sure that at bat's still in Holiday's mind. He knows he has to be maybe a little bit more aggressive with pitches on either the inner half or the outer half. And, and you know, it, it, it kind of gets you in the habit of chasing more than you want to as a hitter. Very difficult to stay disciplined when all of a sudden your strike zone gets expanded. 1 and 2. It's a great point because you've got to protect now with two strikes and outside of your comfort zone, which Matt, for the most part, has a pretty good understanding of the strike zone. And that's why hitters get mad about it. the one, two, two, and two. You're asking me to be patient and know the zone, but and don't chase, but I have to protect, and those things are in opposite directions. The 2-2. Two, two. Three and two. The last two games at Bush Stadium dating back to last year and last night between the two teams have ended in a walk-off for the Cardinals. Winning run is aboard. So from 0-2 to, to a walk. Cardinals have received four walks today. It was Matt Adams last night. John Jay would score early September. A single by Peter Borges to score Yadier Molina in a walk off. Midway through the season last year, we saw the back to back nights Adams and Wong with walk off homers. So Pittsburgh has been on the tough end of a couple of games, well, a handful of games now here in St. Louis. If you're looking for a Cardinal who hits Watson well, well, there aren't very many of them, but we were just showing you him. John Jay hits Watson better than anybody. Even though it's from the left side, Jay 5 for 12 in his career against Watson. Peralta. Strike one. Johnny 0 for 2. He's fly to center, popped out to second. And walked in the seventh. Holiday not the fastest Cardinal, but I've always felt that he's a good base runner. 0-1 pitch. Ground ball could be a double play. Out at second. Good turn by Walker. Out at first. Extra inning, second consecutive day. Buckos and Cardinals. Jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. For Chevy call to the pen is Kevin Segrist. 12th appearance, 1.86 ERA. Off to a good start, as are really all the Cardinal relievers. 
and they have done an outstanding job the first month of the season and Seagrass seems to be regaining some of the form that he had a couple years ago a lot of arm issues last year but the breaking pitch in my mind is still a work in progress with Seagrass he'll throw a good one and then a couple of bad ones and you want to get a higher percentage of good breakers but I think his changeup is improving and the fastball is just explosive with his tall frame downhill delivery guys just have a hard time picking up his fastball Segrist is the sixth pitcher used by the Cardinals today. We are in the tenth. Jordy Mercer looks at strike one and we're underway. Mercer is 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Twice he is grounded out to third, also fly to center. Here's the 01. There's something in Segrist's delivery. I, I, I believe wholeheartedly, if you're standing down on the field, and, and you can have two pitchers and they're both throwing 92 miles an hour. One of those guys, it just looks quicker than the other guy. And I can't fully explain it other than their delivery, maybe hiding the ball, maybe arm action, maybe downhill, maybe late movement. But I don't think all 92 mile an hour fastballs are created equal either. Big guy. Throws on that downward plane too. That's ripped. Out to left. Holiday will have to dig it out of the corner. Jordy Mercer with a leadoff double. And with that, the Pirates get their bullpen up and rolling, and we may see Melanson. Looked like he was down and in. Yeah, that ball came on the inner half. Mercer has struggled a bit offensively this year. He's a good hitter, good player. That ball was supposed to run away a bit, but it came back over the inner half. 15 left on base, the highest since 2014 when they had 16 in a game. This is Young Ho Gang. Spelled J U N G H O, and then Kang, but they say it's pronounced. Gang, spelled with a K, but pronounced Gang. He was the big signing for the Pirates. Had huge numbers overseas. A shortstop. And he looks at strike one. Surprised he wasn't bunting there. I guess they're thinking hit the ball the other way and checking the signs one more time at third base. Now Molina. And they're talking to the infielders who are now backing up a step. Reynolds looking into the Cardinals dugout. Where do you want me? Carpenter still in on the grass. Is he bunting or not? No one knows. Let's think about it. Now Carpenter backs up. A one pitch. Now 0 and 2. Very, Shot, they are not bunting. Me too. I, I can't fully understand why he wasn't bunting there. You've got Sean Rodriguez on deck. Had a couple of hits last night. Mm, just missed. One ball and two strikes. Sokolovic been up with a couple teams in the big leagues. Perhaps we'll see his Cardinal debut. Here's a one two foul back. Perhaps with Kong there's an understanding that he's really good at hitting the ball the other way. And for him not to be bunting. Again, a bit of a mystery, but that swing right there was really geared towards hitting the ball on the ground on the right side. The one two by Kevin Segrist. Evens it up at two and two. Just off the plate.
2 2 pitch. Here it is. Popped up. Reynolds over and out of play. Gang looks a little late to me on the delivery of Seegers. Seegers tried to pound him in the pitch before. Really, this is an important at bat here, what he does with a runner on second base and nobody out. This either becomes a bigger rally, scoring threat, or a boost to the Cardinals. 2 2, goodbye. Strikeout for Seagrist. How about that breaking ball? Better? I'm not sure what this was or if this was a fastball that just came back. Yeah. Maybe a little cutter, but again, off the plate, this plate has been extraordinarily wide today. Initially, just because it wasn't hard, you know, thought it was the uh, the breaking I ball. I could see that, and it, it may have been a hard cutter. I think he just pulled it across his body a bit and got a call. Now Rodriguez, first pitch has popped up. Carpenter wants it. He's got it. Two outs. How quickly the fortunes can change. After the leadoff double, they don't bunt. And now quickly, two outs. A lot of communication going on. Even in the infield. Here's the pop-up. Carpenter said, I got it, and he did. Now Josh Harrison with McCutcheon on deck. So again, Molina wants to talk this over. Cardinals in their bullpen. Sokolovich. Well, then you tell me how to say it. <laughs> Shaking your head at me. That was supposed to just be between you and no, me. No, that's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you can say, so that's what Mike says. Sokolovich, Mike Matheny. Mama but, call him Sokolovich. I but, call him Sokolovich. But when he was asked, how do you say your name? He <laughs> said Sokolovich. So when Miguel is getting loose, and then there's Carlos Villanueva, <laughs> Matt Belisle, and Jordan Walt. No, it's Walden. Now that's it. Get the headset <laughs> off. Get out of here. <laughs> there is it late with that swing. Strike one. Sokolovich. That's what he said. Got it. Yachty sets up outside the 0-1. Now 0-2. All right, take me to Kevin Segrist and Yachty and Molina here on this pitch. Well, I think you have to be careful not to make a mistake. Segrist has kind of pulled a couple of balls across the inner half of the zone. I think you go with the fastball down and away and just try to hit that spot, go off the plate a little bit. See if you can get him to chase. The 0 2. That's where Yachty wanted that pitch, and he pulled it across the plate again. He's pulling the fastball, just pulling it over the inner half. It's actually a strike. Boy, strike zone has been floating around today a bit. Here's a 1 2 to Josh Harrison. Reaching for it, right field, Jay over, got it. Another chance to win it. Reynolds, Molina, Wong coming up. 1 1.
his 14th appearance this year. 2.45 ERA. Extra innings. Bottom of the 10th rolls in and a chance to win it for the Cardinals in back-to-back -back games against the Buccos. I'm a little disappointed I didn't pay attention to his run in from the bullpen. He's got one of those classic uh, sprints from the bullpen. Todd Coffey used to do that, if you remember him, a reliever in the big leagues for a long time. He's the guy can't wait to get to the mound and go to work. Thanks for reminding me about that Todd Coffey run in. <laughs> Some of our fans just ate. <laughs> He would spread. I mean, he's a big man. He's he would. Flying in. Here's Mark Reynolds. 0 for 3 today. Grounded into a double play back in the seventh. Pirates have turned three double plays. They now have stranded 16 in this game. The shift is on for Reynolds. First pitch to him. Jammed him. Strike one. I think this is really surprising for a guy that's hit a bunch of home runs. He's never had a walk off home run. Two for three with a homer against this righty. Here's the 0 1. Not yet. A change in a hurry. Nothing in two. Really been trying to jam Mark Reynolds. They had the infield shift on him. Of course, outfielders are extremely deep. Marte is about standing in the warning track. Milwaukee leading six to one over the Chicago Cubs. That's in the ninth inning. Cardinals started play today with a two and a half game lead over the Cubs. They'll be here on Monday night. The one two. Well sometimes it's been a strike today. This time it goes Reynolds way. This strike zone has been everywhere. I agree. Sometimes not getting that pitch at the knees, but definitely getting corners. Both of them. A 2 2 pitch to Reynolds. That time he strikes out. Called third strike. That's how we begin the home half of the 10th. Well, is it a strike? They've been pounding him in. They go in again. If I'm looking at that from the point of view of a pitcher, I say that's a strike because it just barely tipped that corner. Others may disagree. Yadier Molina. One out, nobody on. Molina looks at strike one. Josh Harrison is near the line at third. Jordy Mercer starts on the outfield grass at short. So does Walker. Outfield is straight away and deep. 0 and 2. You think about the reality, Dan, of playing extra inning games, not only back to back, but a day game after a night game. This is kind of what managers fear. How do I use my bullpen effectively and not get stuck? Pulled foul. You manage for the now. With an eye towards tomorrow. Exactly. Game three. And then four games with the Cubs. And no off day for over a week. Try to balance all that. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Molina. And Yachty hits a high fly ball. Deep right. Stays in the ballpark as Rodriguez makes the catch on the track. And you know what teams think the way baseball is managed now and really has been for a number of years you start to think about having enough arms for tomorrow and maybe there's somebody I hold back and maybe there's a move you make and it, it both the Cardinals and the Pirates are have to be thinking about that from a general manager's point of view they've got the lefty Bastardo left and there's the right handers left this will send us to inning number 11 on this Saturday afternoon. Both long grounds out. The pitching of the Pirates spectacular today. Three hits allowed.
on Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Carlos being the wave. Our Chevy call to the pen. His sixth appearance, a .96 ERA. I think this is an answer, Dan, for what's going to go on on Tuesday. I think the answer is it won't be Carlos Villanueva. And I think Carlos is a good choice for this game here. He's going to be out there for a while, and Mike Matheny uses him in that way. He did his last time out and really was terrific in the extended play in Tim, Tim Cooney's start. Pete Cosma takes over at second base, and that allows a double switch, which means... Villanueva can be out there for a couple of minutes. At least. McCutcheon. Walker. Marte. First pitch. Swung on and missed. And we're underway here in the 11th. Andrew McCutcheon. Single to right. He has walked. Last at bat. He lined out. 0-1 pitch. Ground ball. Taken there by Peralta. One away. So how did we get here? Third inning. Josh Harrison. A base hit past the diving. Matt Carpenter into left. That scored Polanco. Made it one to nothing. The Cardinals picked up their first hit in the sixth. Off of Liriano. John Jay ground ball. Alvarez to the backstop. That scored Peter Borges. We're tied up 1-1. He had a point about... Villanueva in that last outing, which was just two days ago. He went three and two-thirds innings. And it's why a middle reliever, long reliever, needs to be efficient with his pitches because here he is back out two days later, but his pitch count was extremely low in the 30s somewhere. I think 38 pitches two days ago. And, you know, we've seen guys throw 38 pitches in an inning in the third. So it's not just the innings. It's, it is, that's where pitch count does matter for a reliever. 37 pitches on the 30th of April just two days ago for Villanueva. Look at the spin on this ball. Oh, I love that shot. And a new bat now for Neil Walker, the switch hitter. Last earned run a Cardinal reliever allowed was Monday. We're playing here on Saturday. Two for six with a homer off of Villanueva. You'll see some you know, extended numbers against Carlos because of all his time in the National League Central as a starter with both Milwaukee and Chicago. 0-2. Carlos in Milwaukee was introduced to Craig Council, who was very active in the Players Association, and now Carlos has taken that upon himself to help out especially the Latin players, those that do not speak English, in that regard to help them make sure things are right. The one two. Strikeout for Villanueva. Off speed pitch. Walker swings over the top of it. It's now seven Pirates who have struck out today. Cardinals have managed to control Neil Walker so far in this series. He just won one hit in nine plate appearances for a guy that often hurts the Cardinals. Two outs, nobody on. Marte, strike one. Two infield hits for the speedy Marte today. Twice he has grounded to short and also struck out. Two for five. Oh and two. Carlos has come in pumping strikes. With a little help from Yachty. Here's an 0-2. I think the wide strike zone today is part of the reason why we're looking at a 1-1 game in the 11th inning. Without question. And the one two from Villanueva. Driven into left center field. Borges over to cut it off. Marte is thinking too. Throwing to second base and safe. 
about the speed of Marte. Wow. Wow is right. I watched him, Dan, a lot of the way, and I know you were looking at him too, and, and he had no hesitation as he's rounding first base and out of the box, he's thinking too. And he is absolutely flying right about here. Cuts the base well and straight to the bag. That's a big hustle play. I'd put a percentage on it that 85 to 90 percent of Major League players, that's a single. You say 85 to 90, I would say 95 or more. Yeah. I mean, I that's would, a hard hit ball I, to I'm, left center field. I'm going to say 50% don't think about two. Yeah, probably right. So here we go again with Alvarez, who was intentionally walked back in the ninth inning. That was Trevor Rosenthal. Cardinals have used Lackey for six, Manus, Choate, Mitch Harris, Trevor Rosenthal, Kevin Segrist, and now Villanueva. Now let's see if the Cardinals can help the Pirates strand a couple more. And the Cardinals avoided damage in that ninth inning when Cervelli hit a hard hit ball to center field back in the ninth, but right at Peter Borges. So they roll the dice again. They'll deal with Cervelli with two on. Six. 16 left on base. Ricky, that's now five walks the Pirates have received, with three of them being intentional. There's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of stats, there's a lot of things here at the ballpark to look at, but that column right there is often neglected. Two outs, two on, but usually pretty important. I mean, you think about it 12 hits and you leave 16 on, that's that's hard to do when you only have scored one run. Good play there a moment ago by Yadier Molina. Curve ball. Smothers it. Knowing the spin off the dirt is going to go crazy direction. 2 and 0. Oh. The 2 0 pitch. There's a strike two and one. Two on, two outs, and a two on pitch. Here it comes. Ground ball to short. Force play at second. Villanueva, a scoreless inning. What else from this bullpen of the Cardinals? Another chance to win it when we come back.
to 18. The Cardinals have scored one one run. They have a total of three hits. Historic in a way. Most left on base in the Pirates history. 22. They did that three times. Last time it happened was 1938. You remember that 1914 team, Dan? For the Pirates? Well, earlier that season, Rick, in 1938, they also left on uh, 22 against the Cardinals. Hmm. You remember that game quite well. I do. The Wainer brothers were on that Pirate team. Borges, Cosma, Jay for the Cardinals. Second inning of work for Jared Hughes. Borges chops it. Fair. Watch him run on his way to second base. Lead off double Peter Borges. We talked about what speed can do in a close game. The infield has to play in to take away the bunt from Peter Borges because they respect his speed. And because he's in, this ball bounced over the head of Harrison. And now it's a double. Now you're really worried about his speed. We saw Marte stretch a single into a double. The top half of this inning, the Pirates couldn't do anything with it. Let's see if the Cardinals can do something with this situation and Cosma at the plate. A good bunter. You've got a bunt here, don't you think? Without question. You know, when he was the starter a couple years ago, remember how much the Cardinals had him bunting? Yes. He's one for one, by the way, against this right-hander. And I think you bunt it to third. You make Harrison field it. They've got to keep Borges close at second with the middle infielder. Cosma started to show bunt. And may have given it away. I think they were just confirming what they already knew. First pitch to Pete. Strike one. But the left fielder and center fielder, if Pete would decide to swing away, they are playing extremely deep and with zero chance to get Peter Borges. Now the 0 1. Kendo wanting to make sure Cosma is ready to get this bunt down. I don't think that's about a sign. I think that's some coaching going on there with Okendo. The 1 1. Borges picked off between second and third. The one thing that couldn't happen has just happened. Mm. Oh. Here's the inside move. You almost never see this work. Well, we just saw it work. The Cardinals. Taking a gamble, Borges running on the first move, and the Pirates guessing right. Hmm. Strike to Cosma, one and two. Dan, my feeling is if you're going to try to steal third base, I would prefer to do with one out than with no outs. So if Pot Cosmo would not have been successful at bunting him over, then 
maybe you try to steal third with one out. Yep. And a base hit in left. Well, Cosma picks up the base hit. Ninth spot in the order for the Cardinals is three for three and a walk. With Adams and Hayward both getting pinch hits. But almost adds a little salt in the wound of that pickoff that Cosma gets that base hit to left. And you're going to say, yep. Yep. <laughs> Here's John Jay. It'll be okay, Dan. All right. Initially frustrated. Of moving course. on. Exactly. I'm moving on. You know, we we're around this game a lot. We hear players all the time, and they say it. I mean, literally daily. Somebody will say, "Turn the page." Sometimes that page gets stuck. And you know, you, you just can't quite flip it, and a couple pages stuck together. And you just that was, eventually yep. you got to turn it. Got to turn the page. One pitch to John Jay. Ground ball right side. That's a base hit. Cosma circles around second. On his way to third. John Jay again coming through. Well, you wanted to have a runner at third and one out. Now you got him. And you've got Matt Carpenter coming to the plate. Anybody else you want at the plate right now? Either Carpenter or the guy on deck. Another ball bouncing over the head of a corner infielder, Cosma. Making it the third. Good speed at third. Good speed at first. If and you're the Pirates, pick your poison here. I mean, do you, do you pitch to Carpenter or would you rather load him up, force play anywhere, think about a double play off the bat of Holiday? We're going to have another one of those meetings on the mound. That's exactly what Ray Searage will ask in about five seconds. Who do you want? My guess is, my guess is, they'll walk Matt Carpenter. You're going to ask me what I would do. I would walk Matt Carpenter and just hope that Matt Holiday hits into a double play. Let me just throw something out at you. Would you think about bringing in Gustardo to face Carpenter? Carpenter over two with two strikeouts against that lefty. The problem with mixing and matching in an extra inning game is you run out of pitchers sure. real quick. And, uh, and otherwise, I think, yeah, if you're talking about having seven other guys out there in the bullpen to pitch the next potentially four or five innings of this game. Yes, but but I think the, the Pirates are going to go with Hughes. They have to go with him longer, so we'll see if they walk Carpenter or not. The infield's in right now to be sure. And if they're going to pitch to him, they're going to do it carefully. 45,000 on their feet now. I think uh, Clint Hurdle just called an audible. I have a feeling that they just changed their mind after talking it over. Nope, they're going to pitch to it. Carefully. One out, two on. First pitch to Carpenter. Strike one. Outfield very shallow. They need to be. Carpenter is two for seven with a double and a walk off of Jared Hughes. Cosma, the winning run down at third. 0 1 pitch to Matt Carpenter. Here it comes. Carpenter with a fly ball. This should do it. 
Catch made. Cosma tags up. Second consecutive game. The Redbirds walk it off against the Pirates in a game in which Pittsburgh strands 18. The Cardinals win it 2-1. Budweiser player of the game, Matt Carpenter, picks up his 15th RBI this year. Another great win for the Cardinals. Credit their bullpen for doing the job. Villanueva ends up the winner, but credit everybody else who followed John Lackey with putting zeros up on the board. 18 left on base for the Pirates, the story of this game. Pittsburgh now five and a half games out here in early May. The Pirates have to be thinking, you've got to be kidding me. They strand 18. Jimmy Hayes is standing by with Matt Carpenter. Jim. Yeah, the walk-off RBI for Matt Carpenter. Second walk-off in a row. That says something about this ball club, doesn't it? Man, it's a lot of fun. You know, that's, uh, those aren't the ideal ways to win it, but it sure is fun to, to be on that side of the win. Cosma gets the base hit. John Jay gets a, a base hit to set you up. Yeah, you know, uh, they did a great job to start off the inning. Peter started off the inning with us, too, and then, uh, you know, ended up getting picked off. But we found a way to get some runners back in scoring position and, uh, get, you know, get the job done. Sack fly, tell me about the at-bat what you're trying to do. Well, uh, you know, honestly, I'm going up there. It's first and third infields in. I know they got their best sinker baller on the mound. He's trying to get a ground ball. I wanted to see one just to make sure that, you know, if trying to figure out if they were going to come after me or not. Um, you know, I know Holly was on deck. Uh, after a mound visit, you never know what they're thinking. So he threw strike one, and I figured that, uh, you know, they were going to pitch to me. So I just tried to get the pitch up and hit it to the outfield. was able to do it. Pirates, an awful good ball club. They stranded a ton of runners. But that has something to do with your pitching, doesn't it? No doubt. There's two good teams that pitch, really, pitch the ball really well. I mean, Liriano was nasty today. Lackey threw the ball great. Um, the bullpens did a great job, and uh, we found a way to win. Thanks for the time. All right, thank you. All right, Matt Carpenter, Dan. So the Cardinals with six hits and 11 innings, and they win the ball game two to one as the Pirates strand 18. Hard to believe. Post game comes your way next.